Hey quilty friends, today during my live stream, my uh, sewing machine would not cooperate. I could not get it to sew. It wasn't working right, I hadn't cleaned it, I changed the needle, I checked it out, and it looks like it's out of time. So it has been a while since I took it in for a service, so I am going to take it in for a service. But in the meantime, what I did is I switched to my other machine and it's working perfectly. And so what I did is I have recorded a video to show you the steps of how I free motion applique all of the pieces that I fused in the video. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, show you all of the steps that I followed and how I got myself from where I was in the video to this point here where I have free motion stitched all of the, the bits on here. So let me show you my process and uh, let's get started, okay? Before you begin any free motion project, lower your feed dogs and check that you have sufficient bobbin thread. Then you will pull your bobbin thread up through both pieces of material so that the top thread and the bottom thread end up on the top of the project. Set the needle into the down position and then you are ready to check the tension. I always check my tension in the little scrap area outside of the quilting area and this allows me to ensure that my stitches are working correctly and that my needle is engaging the bobbin case. And do a few little loops and just kind of check it again. Pulling my loose threads out of the way. And then I do another quick check before moving on to the fabric. I start free motion applique by outlining each piece on the outside, about an eighth of an inch away from all of the outside edges. And then I fill the inside of each of the pieces. But if you notice, I'm just taking my time and I'm repositioning the piece as needed, checking my stitches, making sure that they're even, that they're not skipping since I'm actually sewing through four pieces of material. I'm using an 80-12 needle Microtex, which is nice and sharp, so it's able to pierce through all of the layers. Take your time and keep your hands about six inches apart, and then reposition the piece as often as necessary to keep tight control of all of your stitches. I usually walk my hands up and down the piece, making sure that my fabric is smooth and tight. Again, just take your time. Free motion quilting uh, is something that actually takes quite a bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, you don't need any special tools. I'm just using a darning foot and 40 weight quilting thread and a sharp needle. Make sure you smooth your piece as you go so that you have a nice flat surface. You don't want to actually quilt any bows into the piece. But again, I keep my fingers about six inches apart. Try to relax your shoulders. And so on the outside and just keep checking your stitches. Move on to each of the pieces working from the left to the right or the right to the left or from the center outward and this ensures that you don't quilt any bubbles into your piece. Always adjusting and smoothing to give you better control of the piece. Quilt about every six inches or so before stopping and adjusting, just to reduce the strain on your hands and on your shoulders. Keep your hands nice and flat, that always helps. And move the piece up and down. 
Do not try to quilt too much space at one time. It makes it very hard and take frequent breaks. Try to keep your stitching even, smooth, and steady. And then after you've quilted, you can take a little break if you need to. Roll up your piece and then you can just kind of check your stitching, make sure everything is nice and flat. Check the stitching from the back. Make sure your tension is correct. It's not too loose, not too tight. You are sewing through several layers. If any of your pieces are coming up, you can just take an iron and quickly press all of your pieces back into place. If the fusible loses its glue, you can always take a tiny bit of a glue stick if you need to and reattach them back down. It will not gum up your needle, but I always take and I give it a quick press before I continue sewing. Next, I bring it back over to the machine. And I continue doing like I did before bring up my thread, I check my tension, and then I sew along the outer edge of each of my pieces. Turning my piece, making sure that everything is flat and smooth, and sewing along the edges. Careful not to get your fingers too close to the edges of the piece. You notice I'm using my hands to kind of walk the piece up. Trying to maintain a nice consistent stitch length. Once you've done that, you can add um, embellishments. In this case, I added a little bit of oil pastel to my piece because I found that some of my coral pieces weren't as bright as I liked them. This is just a standard oil pastel like you would find in an art store. And so using a stiff brush, if your brush is not too stiff, you can just snip it a little bit. I will brush all of the dry oil pastel into the fibers of my batik, pushing that really deep into the fibers so that it adheres to the fabric underneath. And once I've used that dry brush and I've carefully pushed the oil pastel into all of the little nooks and crannies of the fabric. I can take a little bit of parchment paper and set it with my iron. the color of the fabric. Maybe it's just too washed out. So in this case, my coral was not bright enough. And so I used a little bit of that oil pastel to just make it a tiny bit darker. You can always use fabric markers or alcohol-based inks if you want to. Just be very careful when you're doing this on a finished piece. That's why I used oil pastels because they don't run. And then take a little tissue and rub any excess off. You can give it a couple of presses with the iron that will make sure that you heat set all of that um, oil pastel that's in the fibers. This is an art piece that's not going to get washed too often, so using oil pastels to brighten that up was perfect. That's just what I needed. So once you've done that and you know that your um, colors are the way you want them, you can add a couple of layers of oil pastel. Maybe you can add it to some of the stitching if you don't like the way some of the stitching turned out. You can always go over some of the stitches with a little bit of oil pastel just to soften that up a little bit. This is a table runner. It's not going to get too much abuse. It's just going to get looked at most of the time. And so I'm going to do the same thing. Repeat the process. Rub that oil pastel into those nooks and crannies. And 
and then I'm going to use my iron to heat set that again and rub the excess off. All right, friends, I hope you have enjoyed this lesson on free motion quilting. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and like and subscribe to the Jelly Roll channel so that you don't miss a thing. Have a great day and thanks for watching.